Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this uh, Thursday's edition, Thanksgiving Day edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show once again. Uh, heavy rains uh, occurred over the last 24 hours, some pretty good amounts, uh, almost two and a half inches falling at Big Lake uh, during the last 24 hours, ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon from 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon, Kenai. Two, over, a little over two inches of rain, sewered two and a half inches of rain. And uh, South Anchorage picking up two and a quarter inches of rain, go along with those uh, 70 to 80 mile an hour wind gusts that occurred last evening and into the very early morning hours today. Uh, highest wind gusts, uh, I believe about 97 miles an hour at McHugh Creek that was reported up for hillside Anchorage had anywhere from 80 to 85 mile an hour wind gusts, maybe even as high as 90 miles an hour. Anyway, uh, for today, or for tonight on the Hazardous Weather Graphic, until 9 p.m. tonight, winter storm warning remains out for the uh, Susitna Valley area. Uh, possible another 13 inches of snow could fall before it finally ends here this evening or later tonight. And heaviest amounts again over toward the uh, Western Alaska Range or up to the uh, Northern Mountains there. Also, winter storm warning remains out uh, tonight into tomorrow morning, Friday morning for the uh, Alaska Range for the uh, strong gusty winds and snow, blowing snow there and that condition right up into the central interior in around the greater Tanana area. Otherwise, Fairbanks, Nanana, winter weather advisory there to the uh, uh, north side of the Alaska Range and then also northward into the upper Yukon Valley. I uh, could see anywhere from four to eight inches of snow with some gusty winds blowing that around, reducing visibilities. Same thing going on here. Uh, colder air going to swing back in and uh, winter weather advisory out uh, for later tonight into tomorrow there for the Bristol Bay area on up into the uh, southern Kuskokwim Valley. And uh, winter weather advisory for the Yukon Delta, St. Lawrence Island to the uh, Bering Strait coast. Winter weather advisory for those areas for snow gusty winds, reducing visibilities. Now in the case of the uh, north side of the Seward Peninsula around Shishmaref, that's a coastal flood warning out uh, for tonight into uh, midday tomorrow for, uh, let's see, possible coastal flooding due to the uh, gusty winds and the higher seas. Also along here, the northwest coast, same thing. And uh, let's see, that's a uh, coastal flood advisory here for the west side of the Arctic coast. And then a coastal flood warning remains out uh, tonight and tomorrow for the central Arctic coast, uh, getting winds gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour. And of course, uh, uh, pretty light, could get some coastal flooding occurring there on the central coast. Otherwise, just some minor beach erosion in these advisory areas there on the west side. And uh, pretty gusty winds uh, occurring today all the way to the eastern Arctic coast, anywhere from 40 to 50 miles an hour from the central coast here, all the way to Kaktovik and Barter Island. And in, as I mentioned, winter weather advisory there for the upper Yukon Valley for tonight and tomorrow. And on satellite, you can see all that moisture coming northward here. And uh, we've got low pressure, another low here, just south of Kodiak a ways there. And that bringing uh, more wind and rainy conditions into that area and continues to feed moisture into the interior here. And uh, colder air with higher pressure back here to the west, again, uh, drying out along the west uh, coast, Yukon Delta. Next system plowing into the western Bering Sea here. Pretty intense low associated with that and the front spreading another round of wind and rain into the uh, western Aleutians here, uh, eventually into the central areas. But that low is going to stay back to the west and continue to deepen overnight tonight. And that usually slows its uh, eastward progression down. So the front's going to push eastward in the westerly flow of the jet stream, but it will weaken as it pulls away from the uh, parent low there back to the north. Otherwise, uh, over the southeast coast, just uh, some variable mid and high level clouds uh, occurring today there. Uh, maybe 
uh, lower clouds up over the northern areas, possible snow shower occurring there, but nothing significant. And then the uh, wet conditions here for the North Gulf Coast, and that kind of scattered around here, lee side of the range, mountain ranges there, Alaska range, not much in the way of precipitation, but uh, fairly decent amounts of snow here falling from the uh, Eastern Brooks Range area all the way down in toward the uh, Northern Cuscoan Valley. And moving this along, you can see this one system approaching the Central Arctic Coast today, and uh, that's where they had the 45 to 50 plus mile per hour wind gusts this afternoon, and uh, 40 to 50 miles an hour occurring all the way east with uh, some slight snow up over the Chuck CC. And uh, rolling this uh, again, you can see this low slowing down on its northward track. Actually, circulation here, another one a little farther to the south there that was off the map. This one really uh, bringing the uh, wet conditions into Kodiak, and that's kind of the southeast flow here, stalling this frontal boundary out right across uh, Cook Inlet in the Kenai Peninsula today. McHugh Creek still seeing gusts uh, earlier this afternoon, around 70 miles an hour, but uh, again, down from that 97 miles an hour, near 100 miles an hour had overnight last evening, and uh, still uh, moderate amounts of rain, as I mentioned, uh, Seward picking up two and a half inches of rain, and actually Portage had about three and a half inches or three and three quarter inches of rain, uh, which really isn't uh, an unusual amount for that area. And then lighter amounts over toward Yakutat, and then maybe a couple of showers over the northern Panhandle, although I didn't see them reported. And then along the frontal boundary here, we've got areas of uh, snow occurring, and uh, actually a little bit back farther to the west, although it cuts off here, uh, the main snow producing clouds are a little farther to the east here, where the uh, precipitation shaded in, and then the uh, snow, possible blowing snow on the uh, western Arctic coast there, but the strongest winds on the central and east side. Then just some scattered snow showers along and off the coast here from the Seward Peninsula Bering Strait, kind of right along the coastline all the way down to the Alaska Peninsula, but nothing too serious there with some clearing as well in between the showers, even more clearing here over the uh, eastern Aleutians uh, to about Atka, northward and toward the Pribilofs there with that ridging that extends all the way into the Russian Far East. Uh, to the west of that, uh, another round of uh, gale and storm force winds. Most of the storm force winds are up in this area here in a narrow band in advance of the front. Gale warnings there over the western Aleutians with uh, another round of rain. And for tonight, uh, that front pushes eastward here into the adak atka area, but the front in the southern portion already weakening quite a bit, so probably just minimum gale associated with that. The stronger winds will be up here near St. Matthew Island and to the west with the absolute strongest there over the Russian Far East. Behind that, uh, look for uh, numerous snow showers and falling snowfall levels to spread into the western Aleutians. High pressure, mostly variably cloudy, but light winds, dry conditions uh, for the west coast here and into the northern interior as the uh, precipitation continues to hold here with the winter weather advisories out uh, for the Tanana Valley up into the uh, 40 mile country there and then snow backed into Bristol Bay. That'll start to taper off considerably later tonight after midnight here for uh, western Bristol Bay with some clearing, but stays wet Kodiak Island and on the windy side, breezy and rain still moderate to possibly heavy for the uh, south coast of the Kenai Peninsula into western Prince William Sound, but not much uh, too farther to the east, Cordova, uh, just much lighter amounts, staying dry here with high pressure over the panhandle. Outlook 4, tomorrow, boundary, frontal boundary still in this position, the southeast flow edging back to the west a little bit there. That's going to keep the cold air back to the west, but on the west and north side of that front, look for areas of light snow, clearing with high pressure over the north slope and Brooks Range right on down the west coast there with that narrow ridge. And that's uh, having a weakening effect on this front, and the front having a weakening effect on the ridge. So you can see uh, probably barely small craft advisory level winds with this feature now with uh, light rain more rain and snow showers to snow showers or periods of light snow with the next surge of cold air coming into the western bearing. On Saturday, a series of troughs here from the northern bearing into the interior with uh, areas of light snow associated with them, lighter, more showery conditions in between, weak high pressure, clearing it out, drying it out over the southwest interior, light rain with this uh, low center staying just south of the eastern Aleutians, could be a little farther to the north, but that looks good for now, but that'll keep the strongest winds to the south of the area there, and low pressure up here over the uh, northeast uh, or eastern Gulf of Alaska, 
Occasional light rain, light winds for the eastern North Gulf Coast, chance of shower south coast of the Kenai Peninsula, and just a chance of rain for the north coast of the Panhandle with uh, partial clearing on down to the south. Low temperatures for tonight in the upper 20s to lower 30s there for the Panhandle and still mild 30 to 35 for the lows to lower 40s Kodiak Island then into the lower 30s on the Alaska Peninsula and Pribilofs and a shade below zero up here for the Kobuk Valley and along the Brooks Range and then teens, single numbers and teens for the Arctic Coast. Highs for tomorrow, single numbers in the uh, Brooks Range Northern Interior, mid-teens on the Arctic Coast with uh, mid-30s here over South Central Alaska. Highs in the upper 30s for the Panhandle following morning, upper 20s, lower 30s, Southern Alaska, low below zero in the Brooks Range and the Arctic Coast and North Slope with uh, afternoon highs shaping up like this. Uh, single numbers, Brooks Range to lower teens in the Arctic Coast with uh, upper 20s, lower 30s for the Bristol Bay Area. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic here for Friday morning. IFR with that next front here weakening as it pushes eastward across the Bering Spring Marginal VFR to the Pribilofs and then across Dumac Island and then becoming marginal for ADAC. And then some IFR here over the Yukon Delta, bigger area of IFR, Kodiak Island, right on up across southern Cook Inland and the Cuscombe Valley, then back up across northern Sitna Valley, Denali Park and uh, narrow, a narrower band, <laughs> thinner band up here over the uh, eastern interior with VFR to the south, VFR to the north, IFR along the uh, central Arctic coast, and a little bit uh, Point Hope and Cape Lisbon, VFR. Uh, 40 mile country here, Copper River Basin and the southeast coast. And then for uh, Friday afternoon, uh, a lot of VFR out here over the Bering Sea from Shimmy and Atu, all, or the Commodorsky all the way over to uh, Atka. And uh, by tomorrow afternoon, right on the edge there for the Pribilofs, uh, well, still a little to the west, and that narrow band, narrow, a narrow band of IFR here approaching the coast, pushing into the western Alaska Peninsula. IFR, a little less of it, but still pretty widespread here, Kodiak Island, the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound. And uh, back to the west-northwest, mostly VFR and VFR for the Panhandle. Moving ahead to uh, Saturday morning, We've got, uh, you can see this is really thinning out here along the coast as it pushes inland with uh, marginal VFR and IFR with that front from the Bering Strait all the way down oh, to the Alaska Peninsula, maybe, or into Togiak, uh, not quite Dillingham though. Some IFR reappears here over the uh, Atka Island area, otherwise marginal for the Bering Sea. VFR, uh, northern Koyukuk, Kobuk Valleys, Selawik, Kotzebue, Kivalina, all the way up to the Arctic coast, a good VFR morning, and some VFR lingering here over the eastern Copper River Basin into the uh, central Tanana Valley. And for the afternoon, we've got a zone IFR now, uh, thickest here over the Gulf of Alaska and eastern North Gulf Coast, thinning out over Prince William Sound, kind of scooting up to the northwest into the central interior, uh, Koyukuk Valley along the southern slopes of the eastern Brooks Range, and even a little bit in the west side there, North Slope Arctic Coast, not too bad, uh, mostly VFR. And the narrow slot of VFR here over the southwest interior from Norton Sound and just north of St. Lawrence Island into Bristol Bay. Kodiak becoming VFR, IFR. Oh, say from uh, King Cove, False Pass, back over toward Atka, otherwise marginal. And for the passes, both Anatovic and Attigan looking at a VFR day coming up tomorrow with uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, though, IFR throughout the day. Same forecast for rainy, IFR, and windy, IFR, improving to marginal the way it looks at this point in time. And for Isabel, same trend, starting out IFR, marginal in the afternoon. Mintasta, VFR, all day long. And for Tanita, starting out marginal and kind of hanging marginal there, but I think it'll trend toward uh, mostly VFR into the afternoon. Could go either way the entire day. And for Portage, IFR. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR to start with that uh, lost moisture over the northern areas there, or in that area, with, uh, be, but becoming VFR by afternoon. And for the freezing levels, high pressure aloft shifting eastward here, uh, basically over the southeast coast tomorrow, 8,000 feet, 8,000 foot freezing levels with that, falling back to 2,000 feet over Yakutat and uh, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island and then some warmer air on the southerly winds coming northward there with that next front. Uh, see the surface here, 
almost, but not quite to St. Lawrence Island. Icing with that uh, weakening system could be a narrow band of considerable moderate here, uh, pushing in over the uh, northeast Bering Sea, but still the light stuff uh, just barely getting to Novak Island and then down across the Fox Islands. And some light to very isolated, considerable moderate possible here up over the central interior off to the east and maybe a little heavier terrain induced uh, stuff along the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, maybe the North Gulf Coast. Jet stream, strong jet coming over the Western Pacific, splits here over Atka Island, one branch southeast 60 knots over this ridge, the other one diving off to the southeast, 9,000 foot winds, or looking like this, west 40 knots coming into the Western Aleutians, west 40 for the Eastern Aleutians, lighter, more variable over the interior, southeast about 25, but off the panhandle, and at 3,000 feet, uh, pretty light winds there, 5 to 10 knots and 5 to 10 over the eastern interior. Strongest here over the Aleutians, 20 to 30 knots and maybe along the Arctic coast. And light to isolated moderate chop here, Alaska Peninsula, all of the Aleutians and along the southwest coast, maybe the eastern Arctic. Andromeda's father. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the night sky. This week, we're going to talk about a constellation that's part of an ancient celestial story. And more excitingly, one of its stars helped astronomers determine the size and shape of our own galaxy and the distances to nearby galaxies. Wondering what we're talking about? Let's show you. Okay, we have our skies set up for an hour after sunset any night this week facing north. Off to the northeast, you'll see the familiar W-shaped pattern of Cassiopeia the Queen. The stars that mark the constellation, starting from the top down, are Cath, Shedar, Tse, Rukba, and Segan. If you draw a straight line from Shedar to Cath and keep on going, you'll run smack dab into a constellation that looks like an upside down house. This is Cepheus the King. Cepheus was the husband of Cassiopeia and father of Andromeda. The brightest star in Cepheus is Alderamin, and it's 49 light years away from us. Its Bear designation is Alpha Cephei, so named by German astronomer Johann Baer, who named the stars the Greek letter based on their brightness and the Latinized name of the constellation. Being the brightest star in Cepheus, it was named Alpha Cephei. Alderamin lies very close to a region of the northern sky called the Precession Circle. Over a period of 26,000 years, Earth's rotational axis passes through several constellations, tracing out a giant circle in the sky. Right now, our rotational axis is pointed toward Polaris, our current north star. However, in 7500 AD, Alderamin will be our north star. Traveling counterclockwise from Alderamin, we have Alfred, also known as Beta Cephei. Alfric is a multiple star system approximately 690 light years from Earth. Alfric will be our north star between 5200 AD and 7500 AD. The next star in Cepheus is Eri, also known as Gamma Cephei. Eri marks the point of the roof of the house-shaped constellation and is a binary star system approximately 45 light years away. Eri will become our North Star in less than a thousand years, and it will retain the title of North Star for over 2,000 more. In 5200 AD, it will have to relinquish the title to both Alfric and the next star in Cepheus, Iota Cephei. In 6000 AD, the Earth's axis will point smack dab in the middle between Alfric and Iota Cephei, and for almost 2,000 years, they will seem to perform a nightly waltz around our North Celestial Pole. Iota Cephei is a single star approximately 206 light years away from us. It's over twice the mass and over 57 times as bright as our own sun. The fifth star in Cepheus is Zeta Cephei, an orange supergiant star over 830 light years away and over eight times the mass of our sun. The mass value is important because it's very likely, from what we know about the processes that happen within a star, that Zeta Cephei has enough mass to ultimately go supernova, producing a very dense white dwarf as a result. The last star we'll talk about is one of my favorites. It's Delta Cephei, and it's just up and to the right of Zeta. 
This star is special because it's the prototype for a class of stars that astronomers called Cepheid variables. And it's because of this star that we know the distances to nearby galaxies. In 1784, a young English astronomer named John Goodrick began observing Delta Cephei and noticed that it varied in brightness at regular intervals. This discovery laid the groundwork for measuring distances in the universe. In 1908, astronomer Henrietta Leavitt was studying thousands of variable stars in the Magellanic Clouds, and she noticed that many stars were found to have this same relationship. Once the pulsation period for a particular Cepheid variable is determined, astronomers can get an accurate measurement of the star's distance by comparing the star's known luminosity to its observed brightness. This relationship was so strong that it allowed astronomers to establish the size and shape of our galaxy. Isn't astronomy wonderful? And it's all waiting for you when you keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Coastal water forecast here for the Panhandle tomorrow. Southeast winds, 20 knots the entire stretch of the way there with seas running 9 to 13 feet. Light variable winds, uh, 5 to 10 knots over the uh, inside water areas with barely a breeze there for Lincoln Glacier Bay, variable to southeast at 5 knots. Stevens Passage, north at 10 and southeast 10 for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Saturday, not much difference. A little more uh, organized on the wind direction, south to southeast here, but staying light over the inside waters at 10 knots from the Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay area here across Stevens Passage on down toward Dixon Entrance. Seas two feet or less, give or take. Southeast 15 to 20 on the south coast with nine foot seas. A little stronger here on the north side with the north coast Looking at small craft advisories for southeast winds 25 knots, seas 10 to 11 feet. Prince William Sound tomorrow, small craft advisories, east winds 25 knots, seas 6 feet. We've got gales again for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast at 35 knots and 30 knot easterlies here for the western North Gulf Coast. Barren Islands turning northeast at 30 for Kamishak Bay and seas running 17 feet here from the Barren Islands to the uh, North Gulf Coast and about 10 feet for the Kamishak Bay Area, small craft advisory Southern Cook Inlet. For northeast winds, 25 knots, seas at 7 feet, and lighter winds north of the Forelands, about 20 from the northeast. And the outlook for the first day of the weekend here, Northern Cook Inlet, variable to southeast at 10. So pretty light winds here for all of Cook Inlet, southwest 10, south of the Forelands, seas back down to 2 feet. West winds 20 knots for Kamishak Bay, 5 foot seas and much lighter winds for the Barren Islands and the western North Gulf Coast. South to southwest 15 knots, seas running 8 to 10 feet. Small craft advisors for the eastern North Gulf Coast, southeast 25 and not much change there. Still east winds 25 knots, Prince William Sound sees at about 4 feet. East side of Kodiak Island, small craft advisories, east winds 25 knots, seas 16 feet. Shelikoff Strait a little stronger on the winds but slighter on the seas at seven feet, but those winds uh, sustained at 30 knots. Uh, good gales here, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, northwest 40 knots, 17 foot seas, and uh, 35 knot northwest winds all the way down to Cape Sarachev. Brings you side of the peninsula though, swing the direction around to south at 25, northwest 25 for Bristol Bay, and those seas at about seven feet. And for Saturday, northeast winds 20 knots here, Bristol Bay right on down the coastline to Cape Sarachev. And Pacific side, we've got northeast at 15, up to Castle Cape from Cape Sarachev, sees at about 8 feet. And then southwest winds at 15, up to Sitkanak, east side of Kodiak Island, southwest 20 knots, Shelikoff Strait, southeast, or I'm sorry, southwest 20 knots, southwest uh, 15 knots, or Shelikoff Strait. And for the uh, on Alaska Island area tomorrow, south to southwest, 30 knots with seas running 11 to 13 feet. Unmak Island uh, over toward Dekulski, gale warnings southwest 35 knots, westerlies 30 to 35 knots, Adak and Atka with the strongest winds on the Pacific side. And then 30 knot winds out to uh, Kiska Island, but Kiska to Shimian at 2, gale warnings southwest 35 knots with that next front seas 22 feet. And then for Saturday, bring it down to 25 knots here for the far western Aleutians. 
Down to 15 knots now, Kiska over toward Adak and the Central Aleutians, especially Atka Island, north to northeast, 20 to 25 knots, 9 to 17 foot seas. On Alaska Island, east southeast, 20 to 30 knots. Umak Island uh, averages together here, east 28 knots with uh, seas running 11 to 19 feet. And for the southwest coast, southeast winds, 30 to 35 knots, strongest north of Nunavak Island, even stronger for St. Lawrence Island, east at 40 knots and southeast 40 knots with 21 foot seas for St. Matthew Island, the Prevalos west at 30, seas running 15 feet, Norton Sound northeast at just 15 knots. Outlook for Saturday, south winds 15 knots for Norton Sound, southwest winds coming down, changing direction here, 20 knots, uh, St. Lawrence Island down to the uh, Nunavak Island area and St. Matthew Island, even lighter, south southwest 15 into Cuscoan Bay, south 15 for the Pribilofs. But those seas still running at about 12 feet. And for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, uh, central and east side, westerlies 20 to 25 knots tomorrow. And uh, so brisk wind advisories in areas there and northwest 20 on the west side. And then uh, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, east at 15 and then 20 knot winds on down toward the Bering Strait coast. And for Saturday, Bring it up to Gales here from uh, Cape Thompson up the west side there, probably to about, uh, say, Point Layer or around Wainwright along the coast, east 35 knots, uh, and then 20 knots for the Chuck CC, and the central coast, east 20 knots, east side 20 knots, northeast 20 for the areas in between. And for uh, tonight again, high pressure, clearing it out, drying it out, definitely light winds now. Over the, western, or over the western interior, eastern Bering Sea, ahead of this next system, pushing another round of wind and rain into the northern Bering Sea mainly, but extending all the way down to the central Aleutians. This system here continues to feed moisture into the frontal boundary here, and then it kind of slides off to the northwest. So winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings out of the Tanana area, and uh, it's to sit in the valley until 9 p.m. Coastal flood warning out tonight and tomorrow for the central Arctic coast, and then Friday, not much change. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.